And, and this is the story, and it is called The Monster in My Closet. And in the original, if you've read this online, the, in the original version, the protagonist is a girl. Because I just thought that was a fun thing to do, because I'm not a girl. And um, if I was, I'm not going to finish that thought. Uh, I, uh, um, if, uh, but anyway, I rewrote it to be uh, so the protagonist, uh, the, the narrator character is male, so that I don't have to do a female voice throughout the entire thing. Because I do a lot of audiobooks. And let me tell you something. It is tiring anyway, because you're basically acting for like six hours straight in a day, but it's even harder to do like um, uh, someone's mom's voice. Um, you can't have to do it your mom's voice. <laughs> so this is, I'm sorry, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this is the monster in my closet. <clears throat> there is a monster in my closet. It's standing in there behind my clothes, and it wants to come out. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how it got there. But I do know that it's been in there for a long time, waiting. Mom and Dad don't believe in monsters, and until yesterday, neither did I. But during dinner tonight, I had to tell them. A monster, Dad said, wiping mashed potatoes off of his beard. Like, with claws and fangs. That kind of monster. I haven't actually seen it, Dad, I said. But I know it's there. How can you know it's there if you haven't seen it? Mom asked. It's like, I thought for a moment, it's like when it's cloudy and you can't see the moon but it sort of glows behind the clouds, so you know that it's there. Oh, so your closet was glowing, eh? Dad said. I shook my head. I could tell that they thought I was making the whole thing up. No, Dad, I said, but I could feel it in there. And, and what? And if it comes out, I said, carefully, because this was important, it's going to kill us. Well, I should expect so, Dad said. <laughs> Monsters are usually very serious about that sort of thing. <laughs> Mom scowled at him. Richard, don't make fun. <laughs> then she looked back at me and she said, you can have a nightlight in your room to keep the monsters away. And keep your closet door shut, Dad said gravely. Everyone knows that monsters can't open doors from the insides. <laughs> but, but nothing. Stop all this chattering and eat your peas before they get cold, Mum said. I'm trying to deal with a monster, and all my mum cares about is me eating my peas. Ugh, parents! <laughs> they walked me into my room and it was time for bed. Dad made a big production of opening the closet and looking inside. Well, well, looks like we scared it off, he said. He didn't notice that the lid of my toy chest was lifted up slightly. And I didn't bother telling him. He pushed the door, and it shut with a click. He shook the knob and pantomimed, looping a chain around it that he secured with a pantomimed padlock. He swallowed a pantomimed key and rubbed his belly. <laughs> Mum brought in. This guy's based on my dad, by the way. <laughs> Mum brought in one of my old nightlights, the one with the blue pony on it, and plugged it into the wall next to the bed. There, sweetheart, she said as she turned it on. Let's just leave this on tonight. She kissed me goodnight. Then, Dad kissed me on my forehead. There's a good lad, he said. Sleep tight. Don't let the monsters bite. <laughs> Richard! Mom smacked him on his arm. I'm sorry, sweetheart. He's just having a bit of fun. Good night, Mom, I said. I tried not to frown too much at Dad. I heard them talking as they walked down the stairs. He just has a wonderful imagination, doesn't he? Mom said. He's a dreamer, that's for sure, Dad said. I heard ice clink in the glasses. Then a moment later, the creak of their armchairs as they sat down to watch television. I was drifting off to sleep when I heard it. Psst! I thought that maybe I was dreaming, but I pulled the covers up to my neck as tightly as I could and I listened. Came from the closet. Psst! Hey, kid! Come and open the door, hey! I felt my eyes widen as a chill ran down my spine. Come on, kid! I won't hurt you! I just want to get out of here! Open the door and I'll be on my way. The 
voice, its voice, was gruff, but not as gruff as I thought it would be. No, I said in a small voice, barely a whisper, you, you just, you stay in there. The handle shook a bit, and I screamed. My parents were in the room before I knew it. It's in there, I cried. It's in there, and it told me to open the door and let it out. They looked at each other. Mom walked across the room to me and sat down on the edge of my bed. There, there, sweetheart, she said. You just had a bad dream is all. Richard, open the door and show him that there's nothing inside but clothes and toys. No, no, Dad, don't open the door. Fear not, my lad, he said gallantly. <laughs> Any monsters inside this closet will get the thrashing of their lives. <laughs> he walked to the closet and knocked on the door. Hello? Hello? Anybody in there? Mm. He winked at me and he shadow boxed the air in front of him. Richard, stop it and just open the door. He's had an awful fright. Daddy, don't do it, I said, suddenly feeling like I was seven years old again. Please. He smiled and said, it's all right, bucko. Daddy's just going to show you that there's nothing to be afraid of and then we can all have a good sleep. Mummy squeezed my hand. An audience laughed on the television downstairs. Dad turned to the hand Dad turned the handle on the closet door and opened it. Now see, there's nothing to The monster was covered in dark scales, like a lizard. Its eyes were jet black. They reflected something red at their centers. It grabbed my dad by his shoulders and bit into his neck with long, sharp, white teeth. Dad screamed and struggled against it. Clawed hands held onto him, and a spray of blood shot across the back of the closet door, black and shiny in the dim illumination of the nightlight. It slurped and gurgled and crunched, and in a few seconds, Dad stopped moving. I realized that my mother hadn't made a sound, but had let go of my hand. She stood up and walked toward the monster. It dropped my dad's body to the floor and grinned at her, dad's blood dripping off of its teeth and running down its scaly chest. They stood over my dad's body and embraced. <laughs> said to my mom, I missed you too, sweetheart. She said, mm -hmm, Mom? I would have come sooner, but you know that we can't open them from the inside. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Mom said and they laughed together. She turned to face me. Her skin was starting to crack on her face, revealing dark gray scales beneath it. Her eyes were turning black something red beginning to glow in their centers. Come on over here and give us a hug, she said as sharp white fangs pushed her teeth out of her mouth and onto the floor where they bounced around like marbles. Come over and be mummy's little monster. What is happening? I screamed, stop that horrid racket and say hello to your real dad, she said. I reached around for something anything to use as a weapon to protect myself. When I stretched out for the lamp on my nightstand, the skin on my arm cracked and split open. There were gray scales underneath it. Oh no, 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 I said. I reached up to touch my face and I pulled the soft pink flesh away. I felt the rough scales underneath. What's happening to me? I looked at my mom. I looked at my dad. I looked at the body on the floor. I realized that I was ever so hungry. <laughs> and my dinner was getting cold. <laughs> I got out of bed and joined my family. <laughs> that story in public. <laughs>
just like, hey, look, I made up a thing, and I think it's good enough to spend your time reading it. Look at me, I'm weird, and I'm right. So, um, so it takes a lot, seriously. That. Okay, so that's done. <laughs> so, that's a story that I made up in my head, and I made it into a thing. <laughs>